Hello all, in today's video I will show you how to create a security camera blueprint that projects a live feed to a screen using a render capture 2D. Let's jump in. In our content drawer, let's right click, create a new blueprint class of type actor, and we will call this BP underscore security camera. We'll right click again create a new blueprint class of type actor. I will call this BP underscore security screen. We'll right click one more time, create a material, call this M underscore security camera material. And I will right click one more time, go to blueprint, blueprint interface. I will call this BPI underscore security cam operations. So the relationship of these assets is as follows. The security camera will use a render target 2D to basically create a feed of what it sees ahead of it. It's going to send that texture that it creates using that render target to the security screen, which will create a material instance of this material here. And then we're going to use this to basically communicate between these two blueprints. So I'll start with my camera material. I'll double click, I'll right click, and I'll say texture sample like that. I'll right click, I'll say convert to parameter. I'll call this camera. I'll drag the RGB into my base color, and then it'll yell at us to set a parameter. So I'll just set this 127 gray or anything. I'll hit save. And now we'll go to my security camera. So I'll open this up and I'm going to add a function. I will call this function set texture to camera. And for the inputs, I'll hit the plus sign right over here on the right side. And I will say um, text uh, camera texture. I'm going to click here. I'm going to change this variable type to be a texture. Compile and save. Let's go back to our content drawer. And first, we'll open up our security screen. So I'll double click. I will add two meshes. I will add first a cube. And I'm going to scale it to be 2 by 0.1 by 2. And then I'll lift it 100 units up. I will add a plane to my components panel. I'm not going to actually attach this to the cube, so I'll drag it up. Before when it when I had the cube selected, it became parent to the cube. So I'll make this two by two. I'll rotate it. And then I'm gonna move it up 100 units in Z. So now I'm going to pull, I'm going to turn off my snap and I'm going to pull my screen just in front of my cube. And I will change my screen actually to 1.9 by 1.9 in the scale on the right. So that there's a little bit of a frame. I'll select my cube and I'm going to find any material I have that's, we'll use this brushed metal. I'll compile and I'll save. So now let's add the script for this blueprint. So in my event graph, on event begin play, I will say create dynamic material instance. And the material is going to be our security camera material. So I'll use my arrow right here while I have the selected to drop it in here. I'm going to drag off the return and say promote to variable. We'll call this dynamic screen material. And then I'm going to take my plane, drag it off here. And I will say set material. And then I'm going to drag this in here. I'll compile and I'll save. And then I'm going to implement my interface, which I've created. So under class settings, where it says implemented interfaces on the right, I'll type in BPI underscore security 
camera or cam operations. On the right, on the, or on the left side, I now see that I have access to this function, which I'll right click and say implement event. And when I pass through the texture for my camera in a moment, I will use that on my material I've created. So I'll grab my dynamic material and I'll say set texture parameter value. So I'll drag this in here. I'll drag this in here. And then remember before the name of the texture parameter we created in the material is called camera. So I'll type camera here and I'm using this type of node to set a parameter on this dynamic instance. I'll compile and I'll save. Now we'll add some logic to our camera. All right, now let's add some logic to our camera. So I'll double click into my security camera and we will add our components. So in the top left, I'll click add and I will say cube. We'll call this base. I will duplicate this with control D and I will call this anchor. I'll duplicate one more time with control D and call this camera mesh. And then I will add, I've, I've selected the default scene route so that it doesn't automatically parent it to the camera. Uh, I will type in scene capture component 2D is what we want. So I'm going to scale these before I do the parenting. So on my base, I'm going to set this and I'll click the little lock so that it is equal across axes. I'll type 0.5 for my anchor. I'm going to type 0.25 and then I'm going to move it up in space. I'm going to change my camera mesh. So I'm going to type in camera and there is an, a mesh called SM underscore Cinecam. So I'm going to move this up. I'm going to move, rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to put it forward a little bit and I'll turn down my snap a little bit. I'm going to rotate it downwards just like that. And once we attach these, so I'm going to attach our scene capture to our camera mesh, our camera mesh to our anchor, and our anchor to our base. I'll select my scene capture 2D and I will zero it out in the transform as well as the rotation. And we'll see that it's off by 90 degrees, so I'm going to rotate it this. I'm going to move it forward so that the transform of this object is basically in front of this mesh so it isn't blocked. And then we are going to grab our anchor and rotate it by 45 degrees. And you'll see why in a second. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pass forward the texture from this and we're going to rotate our camera. So I'll go to my event graph and we'll add our logic. On event begin play, I will right click here and I'm going to say create canvas render target 2D. I'll drag this in here. I am going to go where it says select class and I'm going to do canvas render target 2D. It's probably your only option. Um, I'll leave it at 1024, 1024, but if you have a lot of these, you might want a reduced texture size. So I'm going to now take my scene, com scene capture component. I'm going to drag it in here. I'll say set texture target. So this is the variable inside basically where this is feeding its, its live information about what it's looking at. It's like a live stream you could think of it for the texture. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable here and I'll call this screen references in the bottom left in the uh, components panel or, or variables panel. And I'm going to make this of type actor. I'll compile and I'll save. And I'm going to change this actor in the top right from a single to an array. I'm going to pull this off onto my work area. And this is an array, so I will pull off and say for each loop. Drag this in here. For all of these screens that I'm going to reference, I'm basically going to pass forward the texture information. And in this situation, I'm using an interface instead of casting to that particular blueprint class. 
So I'm going to call our blueprint event, which is called set texture to camera. So I'll pull off here and I'll say set texture to camera. I'll drag my loop in here. And then the texture target we've created, which is our scene targets feed, we're going to put into camera texture. And so here we've basically created the texture. We've set it, uh, made a correlation between our scene target and that texture. And now we're basically setting that texture on the screen, which is what we're doing right here, where we're passing forward the texture to our dynamic material, and it's going to feed it in here into our diffuse. So back to our camera. So this is our setup. So I'm leaving a comment around that it says setup. And then let's create a custom event. So say custom, add custom event, and I'll call this rotate camera. Over here, we're going to call this function after we're all done setting up and say rotate camera. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my anchor and I will say get world rotation. I'm going to promote this to a variable and I'll say start rotation. I'll drag this in here. Just going to select my variable down here and type control D on my keyboard and say target rotation. And I'll drag this on as a set. I'm going to pull off here and say combine rotators. And I'm going to type 90 in the Z. I'm going to drag this in here, drag this in here. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to in the beginning, the camera is going to be oriented like this, and it's going to rotate 90 and then back. And then once it's done, it's going to wait, it's going to rotate 90 and back. So what I'm doing here is basically caching the initial rotation uh, and then adding 90 to it. So that's like what we want to rotate towards. And then we're going to move that along a timeline. So I'm going to right click and say add timeline. We'll call this rotate camera. Timeline. I'll pull in here to play from start. I'll double click in. In the top left, I'm going to add a float track. Click right here. And then I'll say rotation contribution. I'm going to right click and we're going to add three keys. So I'm going to right click three times, say add key. The first, we're going to put it time zero, value zero. The second, we're going to add, we're going to set to time five, value zero. The second key, we're going to say time 2.5, value one. And then if we zoom out with our middle mouse, we'll see that we've created this sort of arc right here. I'm going to drag over these and I'm going to press one, which is going to change the uh, interpolation of these keys. So before they were linear, which I don't want, and I'm going to press one, which is going to do the same as right click and then select the value. So compile and I'll save. And I'll go back to my event graph. So from here, what I'm going to do is as this timeline is running, I'm going to grab my anchor. I've pulled off my components panel and I'm going to say set world rotation. As it updates, I'll do that. So I'll pull this in here and I'm going to use the rotation contribution, which is feeding out a zero to one value to linearly interpolate between root two rotation values. So I'll pull off here and I'll say lerp vector or sorry, lerp rotator. And I'm going to pull my start rotation off and say get I'm going to pull my target. I'm going to say get. I'm going to drag my start rotation into the A. So it's going to start at that value. And then the rotator uh, value B will be our target. I'm going to say shortest path is true. And then I'm going to drag my return value into here. So before we test, let's just review what we've done and leave some comments. I'm going to select this. And actually, there's one more thing for it to work. I'm going to comment this and I'll say rotate camera. After we complete this over here, we want to pull off 
and say delay. And I'll say one second. And then we're going to call the function we've created, which is called rotate camera. And I'm going to call rotate camera. All right, so let's recap what we've done. Our blueprint for the camera will create a render target. It's going to take its scene capture and basically feed that texture to it to say, like, every frame record over this texture. We're going to pass that texture towards our screen, which uh, towards our screen blueprints, which is where it's going to display. And then internally to this camera blueprint, we're basically just going to rotate the camera by 90 degrees. And we rotated it to 45 degrees in the beginning. So it's basically going to grab this anchor. It's going to rotate it 90, and then it's going to rotate it back. And that's going to loop. And then in our screen, on the beginning, we created the dynamic material of our parent material. And then we cached it, set it to our plane. And then we passed forward the texture that is being recorded every frame. So let's jump into our map and check that out. So I'm going to set up some screens. So I'm dragging my blueprint off here. And I'll rotate this. And I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to scale it up two times. And we'll create, we'll create two screens. So I've copied this over to my other side of this little map. And I'm going to create two cameras. So I'm going to drag my security camera out. And I'm going to rotate it like this. And I'll put it kind of up like that. And I'll drag this other one over here. And I will rotate it like this. Save. And what we actually need to do is in our security camera, we're going to take our screen references variable and we're going to hit this little eyeball right here so that it shows it to the outside of the blueprint. Once I compile, I'll have the option to set an array for my screens. So let's say I want two screens or three screens. I can select my camera and I'll add one, two, three references. I'll eye drop these in here. And I'll go to this side of the map. And let's say I just want two, but they're dramatically different sizes. I'll select my camera, add two references, I'll click my first one, I'll click my second one, or you can use this drop down. And let's test this out. I'm going to save and I'll hit play. Now that we've got our screens, we're going to do one final fix. In our security camera, on event begin play, we're going to add a brief delay in the very beginning. This will allow us to accommodate for the time for our screens to spin up our materials. So now I will right click into our map and say play from here. And when I run around, I can now see myself and there's my little happy self on camera over here. And similarly on this side, I have my camera. So you might do this as an unlit material. There's all types of things you could do for a security camera itself where, you know, it might flash red when it sees you and it might ring an alarm or a sound. There's lots of different opportunities to add this as a gameplay mechanic into your game. But in terms of the technicalities of using render texture, I hope this solved some of your questions. And stay tuned, leave a comment, and let me know what you'd like to learn about next. Thanks all.